I'm going to uh, read relatively short passages. Um, you don't think there's a light on this, do you? Uh, I don't know what kind of church are we in. Are there, are, <laughs> is, there, is there a bishop involved? Uh, this looks like a light. Oh, never mind. I found it. Sorry. I've actually spent most of my writing life uh, writing long, relatively long narrative pieces for The New Yorker, um, but they don't read very well in short passages taken out of them. Um, so I'm going to read a variety of things. This is called Corrections. January 14th. Because of an editing error, an article in Friday's theater section transposed the identifications of two people involved in the production of Waiting for Bruce, a farce now in rehearsal at the Rivoli. Ralph W. Murtaugh, Jr., a New York attorney, is one of the play's financial backers. Hillary Murtaugh plays the ingenue. The two Murtaughs are not related. At no time during the rehearsal visited by the reporter did Ralph Murtaugh sashay across the stage. <laughs> March 25th. Because of some problems in transmission, there were several errors in yesterday's account of a symposium held by the Women's Civic Forum of Rye on the role played by slovenliness in cases of domestic violence. The moderator of the symposium, Laura Murtaugh, should not have been identified as an unmarried mother of eight. <laughs> Mrs. Murtaugh, the president of the Women's Civic Forum, is married to Ralph W. Murtaugh, Jr., an attorney who practices in Manhattan. The phrase, he was raised with the hogs and he lived like a hog, was read by Mrs. Murtaugh from the trial testimony of an Ohio woman. It did not refer to Mrs. Murtaugh's own husband. <laughs> Mr. Murtaugh was raised in New York. <laughs> April the 4th. An article in yesterday's edition on the growing contention between lawyers and their clients should not have used an anonymous quotation referring to the firm of Newton, Murtaugh, and Clayton as ambulance chasing jackals without offering the firm an opportunity to reply. <laughs> also, the number of hours customarily billed by Newton Murtaugh partners was shown incorrectly on a chart accompanying the article. According to a spokesman for the firm, the partner who said he bills clients for 35 or 40 hours on a good day <laughs> was speaking ironically. <laughs> there are only 24 hours in a day. The same article was an error as to the first name and the background of one of the firm's senior partners. The correct name is Ralph W. Murtaugh, Jr. There is no one named Hillary Murtaugh connected with the firm. Ralph W. Murtaugh, Jr. has at no time played an ingenue on Broadway. <laughs> April 29th. Because of a computer error, the early editions on Wednesday misidentified the person arrested for a series of armed robberies of kitchen supply stores on the west side of Manhattan, the so-called Pesto Bandit. <laughs> the person arrested was Raymond Cullum, 22, of Queens. Ralph W. Murtaugh III, 19, of Rye, should have been identified as the runner-up in the annual Squash for Kids charity squash tournament in Rye rather than as the alleged robber. May 18th, because of an error in transmission, a four-bedroom brick colonial house on Weeping Ben Lane in Rye, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Ralph W. Murtaugh, Jr., was incorrectly listed in Sunday's real estate section as being on the market for $17,500. <laughs> the house is not for sale. June 21st. In Sunday's edition, the account of a wedding that took place the previous day at St. John's Church in Rye was incorrect in a number of respects. 
The cause of the errors was the participation of the reporter in the reception. <laughs> this is in itself against the policy of this newspaper and should not have occurred. Jane Murtaugh was misidentified in two mentions. She was neither the mother of the bride nor the father of the bride. <laughs> she was the bride. <laughs> it was she who was wearing a white silk gown trimmed in tulle. The minister was wearing conventional ministerial robes. <laughs> Miss Murtaugh should not have been identified on second mention as Mrs. Perkins since she will retain her name and since Mr. Perkins was not in fact the groom. <laughs> the number of bridesmaids was incorrectly reported. There were eight bridesmaids, not 38. <laughs> Their dresses were blue, not glued. The bridegroom's name is Franklin, is not Franklin, Franklin Marshall. His name is Emery Barneswell and he graduated from Franklin and Marshall College. <laughs> Mr. Barneswell never attended Emory University, which in any case does not offer a degree in furniture stripping. <laughs> Mr. Barneswell's ancestor was not a signer of the Declaration of Independence and was not named Hector Boom Boom Bondini. <laughs> the name of the father of the bride was inadvertently dropped from the article. He is Hillary Murtaugh. <laughs> Uh, the most recent book I published is um, called Deciding the Next Decider, and it's a, uh, an account of the presidential race of 2008 in rhyme. Uh, it's in rhyming couplets. I think heroic couplets is a word we shouldn't be scared of. I think heroic couplets, or epic. It's an epic narrative poem um, interrupted by other poems, what we call embedded poems. Um, some of those are songs. There's a song, for instance, about John Edwards called, Yes, I know he's a mill worker's son, but there's Hollywood in that hair. <laughs> and there's a version of the old Barbara Streisand classic uh, sung by Sarah Palin called, On a Clear Day I See Vladivostok. I thought I'd read the, one of the shortest poems in it. It's called Mitt Romney as Doll. Yes, Mitt so slick of speech and slick of garb, he reminds us all of Ken, of Ken and Barbie. So quick to shed his moderate regalia, he may, like Ken, be lacking genitalia. <laughs> In a previous book of, uh, of deadline poetry, which is really just sort of doggerel, uh, I did a, a poem about George H.W. Bush. Uh, Bush is not an easy rhyme, by the way. Uh, people think it's a short, but rhymes with tush, but we decided that would be disrespectful. I don't use that. Um, but fortunately, George H.W. Bush had plenty of middle names. Um, Farewell to you, George Herbert Walker, though never treasured as a talker. Your predicates were often prone to wander nounless off alone. <laughs> you did your best in your own way, the way of Greenwich Country Day. We wish you well, just take your ease, and never order Japanese. Uh, this is a column that was written for the nation in 1981. Uh, it was called Dinner at the De La Rentas. Another week has passed without my being invited to the De La Rentas. Even that overstates my standing. Until I read in the New York Times Magazine a couple of weeks ago about Oscar and Francis De La Renta having become barometers of what constitutes fashionable society, by creating a latter-day salon for Le Nouveau Grand Monde, the very rich, very powerful, and very gifted, 
I wasn't even aware of what I wasn't being invited to week after week.